Hey guys, so I have been sitting on this content for so long and I've been really wanting to get it out because it's a topic that I think deserves just a little bit more love. So here I am, finally getting in front of a camera to rant to you about commercial archaeology. So I sat down with my friend Aryan about a year ago? Two? Two years. Oh, I'm so sorry, Aryan. Anyways, I sat down with him. Aryan is an amazingly passionate commercial archaeologist here in the Netherlands and he told me all about this super interesting field. Now quick disclaimer, the information I'm giving you in this video is a general brief overview. The specifics in this video are based on the standards and protocols that happen here in the Netherlands which is where I am based so obviously it is going to vary from country to country so make sure you get familiar with your own country's standard practices just to make sure we're not breaking any laws there. So commercial archaeology is the strain of archaeology that investigates local sites before any public or private building is going to take the space of that area. It all sounds very straightforward and practical and that's because it kind of is. Because there's so much modern development today, commercial archaeology is super important because it makes sure that we don't bulldoze or dig through any important archaeological sites that might be there. For this to happen, of course, and as well as to hold those big corporations accountable for all of their actions, there has to be a set of rules and regulations that both the development companies and the archaeologists have to abide by. Which brings me to this fancy piece of paper here. This is the Valletta Treaty, formerly known as the European Convention of the Protection of Archaeological Heritage. Revised. It's also known as the Malta Convention, so pick whichever one is easier for you to remember. It's a treaty that aims to protect European archaeological heritage as, quote, a source of European collective memory and as an instrument of historical and scientific study. It was signed on January 16th, 1992, which is the day before my birthday, like my actual day of birth. So, that was a very auspicious event, if I do say so myself. The Valletta Treaty is an amazingly cool document that outlines a lot of stuff for European archaeology, and I'm going to make a separate video on it because it's so interesting and I have to give it justice, but we're going to be focusing on the things that it mainly says about commercial archaeology for this video because it's a video on commercial archaeology. In a nutshell, some of the articles within this treaty state that whoever intends to disturb the soil, as my friend Aaron put it, has to pay for archaeological investigation first. It's the same sort of thing that they would have to do with an environmental investigation, right? You need to do a proper survey of the land that you're going to develop to make sure that it's not going to, you know, first of all, ruin the ecosystem, etc., etc. But it's the same thing for archaeology, where you want to make sure you do your due diligence before just digging up the ground. And this right here is where the commercial archaeologists come in. What they'll do is they will survey the site that people want to build upon, and then if there's anything important to the archaeological record, they will investigate that further and gather as much information as they can before the building commences. So here's how it's done. First things first, like with anything, research. This literally means sitting at a desk and analyzing the area to see if there could be something of any significance in the spot that they're going to build. After that, survey time. This can either be either on top of the land, like a traditional survey, or you can also do a drilling survey if there are archaeological features or soil marks that are thought to still be preserved underground. And then, if they find anything, they advise to set up a set of test trenches in a grid. These trenches usually measure 4 meters by 25 meters each. That's a long trench, man. These trenches aim to expose about 10% of the land that they want to build on. If there are any substantial finds, the authorities are then informed and the archaeologists advise that a proper full-on excavation should be carried out here. With this information, the municipality's independent archaeologist then comes in and judges the finds and compares it with other finds from surrounding areas to give the go-ahead to keep digging or not. You can think of commercial archaeology as rescue archaeology because they won't dig anywhere unless some sort of development is being planned for that area. They also only dig where the soil is going to be disturbed. So that means if there are any features or structures that go on further than the perimeter of where the building is going to take place, they're not going to excavate it because that's their only job is to make sure what that what is going to be disturbed is what gets analyzed. That thing and as well with commercial archaeology, you probably won't go as deep as regular archaeology because you only want to go to the point where the building is going to take place. So you're not going to go any deeper than maybe the bottom level of the building. From my research and my chats with Aryan, it seems like quite a challenging job because you're juggling a lot of things. You're dealing with the client who wants it done 
fast and cheap, but then you also have the interests of the authorities, of society, and also the academic world. So it's one of those really kind of fun, complex jobs where you're doing a lot of things, and I, I give my kudos to commercial archaeologists. I really do. And after the excavation comes the paperwork. Everything is evaluated, the specialists get to really analyze the materials, and then everything is compiled into one report. All of the finds are then stored in a depot that belongs to the municipality or the region where the excavation took place. This is because the finds are owned by the state, of course, and not the landowners. It really helps to make sure that the finds that are being dug up stay in the area that they belong, which is really nice, you know? And that is essentially commercial archaeology. I really enjoyed my chat with Aryan because when you think about commercial archaeology and you talk to other archaeologists or archaeological students, it sometimes seems that commercial archaeologists get a bad rap. There's this weird stigma or belief that commercial archaeology isn't very methodical, it's very rushed, they cut a lot of corners, they're pretty much haphazardly grabbing things out of the ground, but it's the complete opposite of that. They excavate down to the layer where they can see all of the archaeological features best. Then of course, you know, they take photos, they make drawings, they measure everything digitally, they number everything, and then it's all documented. They also make sure that each feature is excavated completely to ensure that they didn't miss anything, because you can't really go back and re-excavate that because there's going to be, you know, a giant new building on top of it. Commercial archaeologists follow very strict rules to make sure everything is done correctly and they have two years to write the report, which means that they can really do their research, go into everything, analyze everything, study everything, and give it the attention that it deserves. Commercial archaeology is a super important field and I think that we should all give people that are working in cultural resource management a big pat on the back, a little bit more slack because what they're doing is vital to society. Without them, a lot of information would be lost to progress and development. So thank you, commercial archaeologists, for, for being you, really. That's it. Commercial archaeology is also an amazing way to get the public involved because you're doing it locally, you're doing it around communities. A lot of times volunteers are invited to come in and help excavate the site so you get local people that are really interested about their local history and they get to experience it and be a part of that which is really exciting but it's also a really great way to educate the public about the importance of archaeology, of material cultural heritage, all that fun stuff. It's it's really cool what you what you what you do with this job and I you thumbs up. So that's all I that's all I can do. I just give thumbs up. Thumbs up to all the commercial archaeologists all around the world. What you do with all the pressure and everything that you do it like pff, good for you. So for all of you studying archaeology, remember to look at the bigger picture. Archaeology happens everywhere. It's right under your nose and it's a lot cooler than you think. So thanks so much, Aryan, for sitting down with me and chatting about commercial archaeology. I'm sorry it took so long to put this video out, but here it is. Everyone Enjoy it, bask in the glory that is the Dutch commercial archaeologist. If you want to write up and you want to see a lot more images of what aryan has been up to here in the Netherlands with his fun job doing commercial archaeology, go to my website. The link to that is in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Thanks so much for supporting the YouTube channel. Follow me on all of my socials. And as always, stay dirty, my friends.